the Cowboys did not make a move today, John. Surprised or not that the Cowboys decided to stay and pat at the trade deadline? I'm not surprised just because I know what Jerry said today on your guys' station, and I know what he said after the game uh, on Sunday, but actions speak louder than words, and the actions of the Dallas Cowboys for the majority of time since I've covered the team have been that they're not going to be a team that makes big moves, uh, not only just at the trade deadline, but just in trades in general. I mean, the only one that's happened since I've covered the team is really the Amari Cooper deal, and I just didn't get the sense that they – they feel they need a receiver as badly as they, they did at that time. At that time, it was really evident the team was struggling on top of it. I mean, this team's 6-2. and two. And so as much as I think that they needed to add a wide receiver, I don't think they felt they needed to add one as badly. But the fact that they did were at least making calls and there was interest at wide receiver, if, if I'm, if I'm going to sell any hope to any Cowboys fans, hey, maybe this just in some way, some small way ratchets up Maybe some maybe some December interest in Odell Beckham. So, John, I mean, obviously, I think we're all speaking about the the reported interest that they had and discussions that they were having with the Texans on maybe making a deal for Brandon Cooks. Uh, do you have any further insight or any uh, ideas of what the discussions looked like for Brandon Cooks? I, I don't. I don't. I saw some of those reports, too, and... Uh, just to be completely honest with you guys, when it happened, one of the first things I thought of when I saw that is this sounded a lot like the um, when right before Dak hit that deadline on the first franchise tag and when he ended up playing under the tag. I don't know if you guys remember at the time, but there were some reports that came out that they were really close and they started talking right before the deadline and they mm-hmm. just couldn't get it done. I don't buy into that stuff. I, if you really are going to get something done, you know in advance, hey, this is what we're offering, this is what we're doing. Um, but then again, I guess it could be different because I'm looking at it from a Dak Prescott contract perspective. And in this perspective, you're also dealing with another team, in this case, the Texans, who maybe they were, uh, maybe they were playing a little chicken with the Cowboys and a few other teams to think that, hey, somebody will come in here and, and, and they'll, they'll take whatever this, you know, what we're looking for and what we want. And we'll get this type of draft compensation. And then all of a sudden, maybe in the final, you know, 10, 15 minutes, they didn't get what they were looking for, but I don't know that I buy that. It came down to just, you know, the clock down to the last few seconds. I think that uh, all sides involved were just probably not as close as, as what's being reported. John, when you look at this team now going forward based on not making a move at the trade deadline, do you still see something possibly happening in the free agent market, Odell Beckham Jr., or anything else, or is this team pretty much where they are now after acquiring Jonathan Hank is on this defensive line? Yeah, I don't think that they're necessarily this is it. Um, Odell is certainly one that, I mean, until he signs somewhere else, that, that that has to be on the radar. Of course, he has to come back and, and show that he's healthy, and I would think that he would need to play in some regular season games before you'd want him to play in any playoff games. But um, even with him coming off a second ACL injury, I, I just if he can show that that knee is healthy, I mean, Odell, I, I, I would be surprised if he doesn't have something to offer. Um, I mean, he was such a huge part of – taking that Rams team and putting them over the top last year. I don't see why a year later he couldn't do something similar for a team like the Cowboys. And judging by everything that I've seen reported about his injury and, and him coming back and, and what he wants to do, uh, everything I've, I've heard is it's all Super Bowl related. I want to go to a team that has a chance to win a Super Bowl. And so for all the, those that would think, oh, well, then he's just going to go back to the Rams. You know, that was the talk, you know, before the season started. Well, they're not looking that great right now. <laughs> and then and you have teams like Buffalo and, and you know, like obviously Green Bay. Or, but I just I think if the Cowboys really wanted him and, and just the way that Odell is in terms of the, his play style, you know, he's a big personality, reminds me in a lot of ways of Des Bryant. Uh, they're friends. They, I just they've always I, I've always seen a lot of similarities between those two. I mean, I could see him really loving that idea of being being the guy that ends up helping the Cowboys put everything over the top. And that, and so until he signs with another team, I will not I would not close the door on that. But I mean there's other possibilities out there. I wouldn't say that they're completely set with this lineup. I mean, especially if wide receiver play doesn't get better on the team. John, I mean, I was about to bring it up, but we got someone on the truckwreck.com text line saying, why do you think Tristan Hill got released? And that was something that maybe slid a little bit under the radar as it wasn't a trade, but it was a move that they made. What was the decision making behind Tristan Hill being uh, released and moved on from by these Cowboys? 
I'll tell you, one of the most interesting things around this time of year in the NFL is, is trying to just track certain guys that aren't playing. You know, you're like, why isn't this guy out there right now this week or whatever like that? And there is that little bit of they don't want to play that certain player because they are trying to shop that player. They don't want them to go out there and get hurt. Um, and so for that, I'm bringing that up because I see some of that with potentially the Tristan Hill being inactive this past week and then also where Terrell Basham is um, where, with him coming back from injury, and, and, and he's pretty close. I think what it came down to is that they're pretty loaded on the defensive line, and it became a numbers game, and so it was probably going to have to be Tristan Hill or Basham, and Basham brings more value. I mean, he can rush the passer. You could argue last season was the best season of his career, uh, whereas Tristan Hill does a lot of similar things that Neville Gallimore does. They just added Jonathan Hankins. Uh, this is a team that, I mean, not just this team, but most teams, you know, on those third downs, when you're looking for someone to rush the passer, that's generally when they're bringing more DNs out on the field, not more, you know, three technique defensive tackle types. And so uh, I think it came down to Neville Gallimore and Tristan Hill. And uh, they ended, and Ter- Terrell Basham gets a mix in there as well. And I think that they just decided uh, it's a tough decision. We'd like to keep Tristan Hill, but we got to get rid of somebody. And so it ultimately ended up being him. John Machota of The Athletic joining us right here on the Get Right with Educate G on 105 through the fan via the Diamond Factory Hotline. So now as we spin this forward here, this team on its bye week, 6-2, and two, sole possession of second place in the NFC East, right in the thick of it in the NFC playoff picture altogether. How does this team move forward now, and what do you believe the ceiling is for this team given what they currently have on this roster? Well, I still think the ceiling, I think the ceiling of this team is they can get to the Super Bowl. Um they they obviously would have to stay they'd have to stay in pretty good fortunes in terms of the injury department. You know, you can't lose the Micah Parsons or Demarcus Lawrence or Trayvon or Dak or, you know, some of these other guys, C D Lamb and such. Uh, so they're gonna have to be fortunate there, stay relatively healthy on the offensive line. But if that happens, um, you know, this is a team that I, I do think, you know, Kevin, you mentioned on the, when we were doing the Media Mash podcast earlier today about that San Francisco loss in the playoffs and how, you know, they they were they out-physical the Cowboys. And I think there is there is a learning experience from that. And, and I don't know that we'll see that exact same team uh, this year in a playoff situation. And so uh, even though they didn't make a move today, I, I still think they're completely in the hunt. And, and, and as much as it's I'm saying this because of how well I think the team's playing and what they've been able to overcome already this season, mainly losing Dak and, and still being six and two right now. It's also I just you look at the landscape of the NFC. There just isn't I mean, the Eagles are clearly the best team in the NFC and, and I don't think that anybody looked at the way the Cowboys played them with Cooper Rush at quarterback and thought, Oh geez, how do you ever beat this Eagles team? I mean, so uh it, the the NFC is there for the taking. Now you gotta get to the Super Bowl and then when you get there, if you have to face you know, the Bills or Chiefs, that's another story. But the, as far as the <laughs> NFC goes, I think that they're right there with all of them. We're talking to John Mishota. John, I mean, I don't think that – I think we've reached the pinnacle of Tony Pollard talk in around the nation at this point. And if we've had a lot of conversations over years at this point of Tony Pollard getting touches and getting more involved. And this is the first year that seemed like they've done a little bit more. And, of course, out of necessity, they really had to give it to him, and he produced this way. What is the ideal mix of Tony Pollard, Ezekiel Elliott, and do you trust this organization and especially this uh, coaching staff to actually hit that number, hit that mark? I do. Um, I know fans want to see Tony, especially after Sunday, you know, get this 20 carry. He's the lead back. Everybody just move out of the way type thing. But uh, I don't get the sense that's going to happen. And and, and today was – Today's a good day at, at the star because uh, we got all a uh, chance to talk to all the assistant coaches and uh, we don't, we don't get to talk to them during the season other than the, during the bye week and then one time at training camp. And it's kind of, they make almost all of them available in like a 30 minute window. So you got to get what you can get. And, and I'll tell you what, running back coach Skip Pete was, was as good as anybody in terms of just talking about uh, that group and, and, and the balance between using and Zeke and Tony Pollard. And, and the way he compared it is that, Tony Pollard's like a race car where when they have him out there, they want to be able to maximize every touch that he gets because he has the chance to do what he did in that game uh, against the Bears and have those big runs that uh, he's turned several of them into long touchdown runs. And see, the thing is, though, is if you have a guy like that, you don't necessarily want him getting, you know, the, the 18, 20, 25 carries because 
that will take away from, from what he is. When they have him out there, they want him to be at his best so that if a hole does open, he can take it to the house. And then, obviously, the other side of it is he compared Zeke to more of your, uh, you know, luxury sedan type who can, can last for several miles and, and you don't have to worry about the wear and tear as much. Uh, and it, and it's just and, and is the physical type guy, and he compared them them two to one being basically like a hammer, and the other one being the sword. And that just the way that they work together, I I I just think that that's generally what they want. They want both of those guys to play together. And of course, you know Jerry Jones, whenever he's talked about Zeke, he talks about how you know the team goes as Zeke goes, and people roll their eyes at that. But I think it's more of the team will go as as really Zeke and Tony Pollard together, and especially with them not addressing wide receiver. I think they're solid at wide receiver, but where they're at right now without making an addition there, I think it leans even more to if this running game is elite c- coupled with that defense, then then they should win a lot of games in the regular season and in January. 